Hello everyone, welcome to another CSS tutorial. In this video, we're going to be covering CSS shadows. Now there are two types of shadows we'll be dealing with today. Text shadow, so we'll apply a shadow to this heading. And the second is box shadow, which we will apply to this white container element. So let's dive right in. Let's head over to our CSS file. We're going to create a new rule to target our heading level one and the property is simply text shadow. Now we're going to string together a few values here to define uh, the appearance and the positioning of the shadow. So the first value controls the horizontal positioning or offset of the shadow. So let's say we want it to sit three pixels to the right of the text. The next value is the vertical offset. So where do we want the shadow to sit in relation to the text vertically? So we'll just go ahead with zero. The third value is the blur of the shadow. So if we enter zero, it'll be a very sharp shadow. It'll be as, as sharp as the text itself. If we enter an, a larger value here, the text will be blurred. And finally, the fourth value is the color of the shadow. So I will just pick a gray. Now if we refresh, we can see that a shadow is applied. Now let's just go ahead and tweak the values really quickly so you can get a good idea of, of how the different values work. So again, if we change this from zero to three, the second value is the vertical offset. So if we refresh, you see that it's now pushed down three pixels. Finally, if we edit this third value, change this to three, we see that instead of the shadow being sharp, it is now blurred. Now a common question is, okay, so I can place the shadow to the bottom or the right of the original text. What if I want to place the shadow above or to the left of the original text? Well, it's pretty simple. You can just make these values negative. So if we go negative three pixel horizontal, negative three pixel vertical, if we refresh, see that the shadow is now to the upper left of the text. Now that's really all there is to the CSS text shadow property. It's a fairly simple property. Let's move on to the box shadow property. So we're going to add a shadow to our white container. So let's head over to our CSS file and create the shadow. This is the CSS rule for our container element. We're going to create a new declaration, box shadow. We'll go five pixels horizontal and vertically and a five pixel blur. And for the color, we'll give it the same value as the element's border. Now if we refresh, we can see that the shadow was applied. I think it looks a bit off though. I think it would look better if the shadow was a bit more transparent. So if it was a little bit lighter than the border. Now there are a few ways we can adjust the color. We could go into Photoshop or a color picker like this and just choose a color that we like, or we can use the existing color that we already have and just lower its transparency. So this is a good way to segue into the final topic before we close out this video of RGBA color values. They allow you to apply transparency to colors. So the RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and the A on the end of RGBA I would assume stands for alpha transparency. But enough with the rambling. First we need to find the RGB value of this border color that we were using. So I'll head over to this online color picker and paste in the value. And it gives us the RGB value. So the R is 128, 170, and the blue is 183. So in our style sheet, we're going to erase this hexadecimal color, RGBA parentheses. And now we're going to simply add the red, green, blue values. So let's see, it was 128, 170, 183. Now, if we refresh our page, we see that there is no change in the shadow. This is because our final value one controls the transparency of the opacity. So if I put 0.5, the shadow is only gonna be as half as strong as it was before. So if we refresh, we see that it's a very subtle shadow now, and I think this looks a lot better. And if you're not happy with it, it's very easy to adjust. So we can always just go in and bump it from five to 0.7. If we refresh, we see the shadow gets darker. So it really gives you fine grain control over your colors. 
And it especially is great when you want to apply a black shadow. And in the past, before RGBA, you would have to sort of take the base color and then find a bit darker color and match it. But if you had varying backgrounds, it, it just resulted in a lot of work. So RGBA is great. And one final thing before we close out this video is browser compatibility. So RGBA is not going to work in older browsers. And perhaps even more relevant, CSS shadows are not going to work in older browsers. But it's okay because they're not exactly vital to the layout. However, there are a few lines of code we can add to our style sheet to ensure that shadows work in the greatest percentage of browsers possible. So, I have an outdated version of Safari here, and as we can see, the text shadow is working, but the box shadow is not. Now, Safari is a, f is a very modern browser, but I'm running behind in my update. So, in our style sheet, there's something we can do to help users see the shadows if they're not running the utmost uh, updated browser. So, in our box shadow, if we simply copy this line and add a prefix to the property, WebKit box shadow, now if we refresh in Safari, we can see that there is a shadow. And it's the same thing with Google Chrome, if we hover Google Chrome, it uses the WebKit engine, so it's the same thing. If someone has an older version of Chrome, uh, this will allow them to see text shadows. Also with Firefox. Now we were able to see the shadow in Firefox right off the bat because this is the, the cutting edge version of Firefox and it has added text shadows to its rendering engine. But if this was an older version of Firefox or if you think a large percentage of your audience might have an older version of Firefox, we can do the same thing. So we can just take the property, duplicate it, and add a prefix of Mose and that would cover all of your bases. So to recap, we've added text shadows, box shadows. We learned the basics of RGBA. You add the red value, the green value, the blue value, and then your transparency value. So hope you feel like you learned something, and that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.